Hi, I'm Daniel from Ratings.com. Today we're testing the Samsung RU7100. It's a good 4K TV and the successor to the very popular NU7100 from last year. We bought the US 55 inch model to test, but it's also available in a wide range of sizes from 43 inches up to 75 inches. We expect these other sizes to have very similar picture quality. It's also available in many other regions with the same RU7100 model code and we expect these international variants to offer the same performance. Typically, there are only minor differences like the supported voltage or tuner to support these different regions. In this review, we'll start by looking at the design of the TV and then go on to our picture quality tests. We'll look at the motion handling and input lag and then compare to competing models which are currently available. If you'd like to skip ahead, then check out the links in the description below. Also, we're proud to announce that we've just reached the 100,000 subscriber mark and wanted to thank you for your support. We work hard to help you find the best product for your needs, but if you feel like we've left anything out, then let us know in the comments down below or see our website for more than 600 in-depth reviews. The design of the RU7100 is excellent. It looks very similar to last year's NU7100 with only a few subtle differences which we'll go over. The single control button is located under the Samsung logo at the front of the TV and provides basic function just like the Q60R. The wide set plastic stand supports the TV well, but it does require quite a large table. The borders of the TV have an average thickness and look good. Moving around to the side of the TV, the TV is quite thin, so it has a relatively low profile close to the wall if you mount it. The rear of the TV has a textured plastic finish, which looks good, and there are channels along the bottom of the TV for cable management, similar to the other new Samsungs. There are also clips on the rear of the stand to keep those cables out of sight, which is a nice touch. Interestingly, the analog composite and component inputs don't require an adapter this year. You can use these to connect older devices. Looking at the TV through a thermal camera, we can see that the lower edge is much warmer than the rest of the TV. This is due to the location of the LEDs at the bottom. Now we'll move on to the picture quality. We'll be comparing to currently available TVs, but competing models will change as new TVs are released throughout the year. For an updated comparison with new models as we buy and test them, see the review page on our website, which is linked below. A high contrast ratio is important for those who watch in the dark for the TV to produce deep and detailed dark scenes. We measure the contrast ratio in a dark room with our checkerboard pattern displayed on the TV. We use this Konica Minolta LS100 luminance meter to measure the white and black luminance and the contrast ratio is the ratio between these values. The RU7100 has a VA type panel with a very high native contrast which is excellent. This is about the same as the NU7100 from last year and allows the TV to produce deep blacks which is great for those who watch in the dark. This is better than TVs with IPS panels like the LG UK7700. Unfortunately though, this TV doesn't have local dimming to improve the dark scene performance further. This is quite normal for these lower end 4K models though and tends to be a distinguishing feature with mid-range and high-end TVs. Now, a wide viewing angle is important for those who sometimes watch off to the side. This is because all of the displays we've tested lose accuracy when you aren't watching from directly in front. We measure a number of test patterns at 10 degree angle increments to objectively evaluate the loss of image accuracy. As typical for TVs with VA type panels, the RU7100 doesn't perform well and the blacks raise off axis and the gamma shifts. Some of this can also be seen in our comparison video. We chose this particular image to show the viewing angle performance of all TVs because color shifts tend to be most noticeable when looking at skin tones. Overall, everyone's sensitivity to this issue varies. For those who watch from directly in front, this isn't an issue, but if you watch at an angle, then a TV with an IPS panel, like the LG UK7700, may be a better choice. If you have a bright room, then good reflection handling is important to reduce the amount of glare on the screen. Like many of our other measurements, we measure this in a dark room though, so that we can completely control the test conditions. We use this integrating sphere to provide a uniform and stable light source and measure the ratio of light incident on the screen compared to the amount reflected. The RU7100 has decent performance, which is about the same as the NU7100 from last year.
It should be fine for most rooms, but in a bright room this may be limiting. Now, another important factor for those in a bright room is the brightness of the TV. A high peak brightness allows it to effectively overcome glare. Don't worry about the TV being too bright though, as you can turn down the backlight to suit your room. At about 270 nits for large white windows, the RU7100 has a decent peak brightness, which is in the same ballpark as the NU7100 from last year. It should be fine for most rooms, but in a very bright room it may be limiting. If you watch HDR content, then a high peak brightness is also necessary to take advantage of brighter highlights possible in HDR. Our HDR real scene peak brightness is the best measurement to correspond to real content. Unfortunately, the RU7100 can't get bright, so highlights won't stand out in the way the director intended. Another advantage of HDR content is the ability to display more saturated colors, such as vivid highlights. To display these well, a TV requires a wide color gamut. We measure this by sending a fully saturated Rec 2020 wide color gamut signal to the TV and use a colorimeter to take measurements. While the RU7100 can display more vivid colors than some SDR TVs, it isn't enough for us to classify it as a wide color gamut. This is about typical of most low-end models, including the NU7100 from last year, and is disappointingly less than the TCL 6 series. We also take a photo of each screen's uniformity on our 50% grey test pattern. This does vary between units, but we usually find that the unit we buy tends to be representative of most people's. This is because it indicates the level of quality control of manufacturers and any uniformity issues which are a result of the type of technologies used. While this photo is only of a grey image, it shows how uniform the screen is regardless of the specific colour shown. In this image of the RU7100, we can see that the edges are a bit darker, which produces a vignetting type effect which some people find distracting when watching TV. The centre of the screen is relatively uniform, however there is a darker region in the bottom third, which produces a uniformity issue known as the dirty screen effect. This can be distracting when large areas of a similar colour are shown, such as when gaming or watching sports. This is about the same as the NU7100 from last year, and is better than the TCL 6 series, which was notorious for having uniformity issues, which vary significantly between units. On the other hand, different units of Samsung TVs tend to perform more consistently within the same model. So now onto the motion handling. These results are a bit technical, so if you want to learn more about motion handling of TVs, then see our video series which is linked below. If you watch fast paced content such as sports or plan to use the TV for gaming, then a fast response time is important to reduce the amount of motion blur. We use our own tool developed in-house to measure the time it takes for the LCD to transition between different colours. We use this to provide an average value for the time it takes for the TV to complete 80% of each transition and another value for the time it takes to complete all transitions on average. Overall, the RU7100 provides a good result, but it isn't as good as many other new TVs. There isn't too much blur when watching sports or playing games. This blur is visible as a darker trail on the left hand side of our logo photo. Also visible in this photo are logo duplications which are a result of the 240Hz PWM flicker of the TV. Now if you want the clearest image when gaming then you can decrease the flicker frequency of the backlight to 60Hz, a technique known as black frame insertion. This reduces the amount of persistence blur. Unfortunately we found that although it flickers at the correct frequency, on our unit there is a lot of crosstalk. The backlight strobe catches the TV mid transition, resulting in the double image you can see in this photo. We don't know if this is likely to perform better on other units. Now if you do plan to game, then a low input lag is important to reduce the delay between something that occurs in game and when you see it on the screen. The good news is the RU7100 is exceptionally quick, with about 11 milliseconds of input lag at 60Hz, regardless of the input resolution. This is excellent and can make this TV well suited for fast paced gamers. This TV also supports the auto low latency mode feature, so a game console like a new Xbox can trigger the TV to automatically enable low input lag when you open a game. So now on to the other features. Like other Samsung TVs, this TV has the Tizen Smart Platform. It works well, however this TV uses a slimmed down version with less animations. Unlike higher end Samsung models, there is no smart remote, so there's also no voice control. 
Overall, it's decent and should be fine for most people, but like other Samsung TVs, there are ads or sponsored content around the smart platform. We also test the sound of each TV by measuring the frequency response and distortion in our controlled testing room. The RU7100 performs almost identical to the NU7100 and can get decently loud, but it may not be enough for large or noisy environments. It can't produce deep bass, but can produce clear dialogue. If you care about sound, then it may be worth getting a soundbar in addition. So overall, the RU7100 is a decent budget 4K TV. Not a lot has changed from the Samsung 7 series for a few years, and this TV is no exception. It offers very similar picture quality and performance to the NU7100 from last year. The input lag is a few milliseconds lower, and it supports auto low latency mode for gamers, but otherwise it's almost the same TV. The TCL 6 series is a budget model with impressive features. It offers better performance across the board, and especially for HDR due to the wide color gamut, high peak brightness, and addition of local dimming. If you don't care about these features, then the Samsung may be a safer buy for some though, as it is likely to have better and more consistent uniformity. LG's IPS TVs like the UK7700 have a different type of panel which offers better viewing angles, so may be a better choice for those with wide seating. They offer poor darkroom performance though, as the low native contrast ratio results in blacks that appear grey. If you watch at an angle, then it may be worth going with the LG, but otherwise the Samsung is likely a better choice for most. So that's it. We want to hear what you think of this review and what you want to see next. Leave a comment down below to let us know what videos you are interested in. You can check out all of the measurements on our website. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become a contributor. Thank you for watching and see you next time.